So again, how did the how did your work, your paintings, tie into your recovery in that sense? You know. Well, I think in the beginning it was. Uh, remember, I mentioned the organization. I have a dream of healing through the arts. Right. Right. Uh, I sobered up on December 10th, 1981. I was in a gallery in Old Town by January 1st, 1982. Don't ask me how that happened. My dad was my National Endowment for the Arts. He loaned me a thousand dollars. You don't loan any money to drunks. You didn't yeah, sober. Right, right. I went into business with this white guy. He was a no script writer from Hollywood with seven years of sobriety. A little mustache, a little cigarette holder and beret. And the mo last movie he worked on was Ocean's Eleven with Frank Sinatra, and oh, then they yeah, booted right. him out. Right. And uh, he was down there. He was going to start writing again, so we shared space, but damned if he didn't get drunk on me. So I had to ask him to leave. It was, it's always avian, you know. <laughs> it wasn't me this time. But I, uh, I think it was just. You know, I, I didn't know what I was, I was 39 years old, and I didn't know what I was going to do in the arts. Uh, I, I, I was throwing oil at canvases on the wall. I was I was doing watercolor. Uh, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I had to explore that journey of the art. And what happened was, uh, that took me about six years to explore that journey, but uh, in between that six years, a lot of things happened. I mean. Even Alan Hauser came to my gallery a couple of times and talked to me. And who, who the hell was I? Yeah, right. I, 39, opened up a shop. The guy that wrote the introduction, Hank Gobin, uh, was from the Tulalip tribe. He was a, a retired administrator, teacher from my, he came to my shop. Wow. All these people were coming and I'm sitting there thinking, what is this, you know? <laughs> I mean, you're always going to their shops. Yeah, right, right. And uh, yeah. it was Hank Gobin that uh, he looked, he watched my art and how he piddled around. And finally, one day, uh, he told me, he said, Sam, he said, I'm going to make a suggestion. He said, work on watercolor paper using gouache paint. And I thought, never heard of gouache paint. Right. So I went and bought gouache paint and watercolor paper. And the whole journey started all over again because then I had to learn how to paint. <laughs> It was a lot different than watercolors. And uh, out of that, he rose these long, elongated figures. I don't know why. I had painted some in oils. There's a picture of one in there. Uh -huh. uh, but I always had these Indians looking straight out or up. I never tried to l have them looking down because that insinuates that you're. You right. Know, you I know. read that in there. It says that your images uh, were looking up. And this was very of and we symbolic. Ex to extended the eagle feathers because eagle feathers with a lot of Indian tribes represent uh, a part of the ceremonial aspect of right. the things that we do. Like if you burn sage or cedar, or, uh, if you say prayers when you're doing that to smoke, right. take your prayers to the creator and right. it dissipates, you know. And, and all I began to learn the basics of who I was. I really, I'm a Chippewa Indian, but I never really knew because my folks were a part of assimilation, this government's policy of assimilation, right. so they didn't talk very much about their own because that right. was kind of a no-no, but every now and then my dad would talk about the tragedy and so would my mother. And uh, so I, I, after high school, I, be, I began this journey to find out who I was. And it was an active time. I was out in the Bay Area in the 60s. Yeah, I saw know. that, right. And Indians began to, uh, yeah, kind of gel together right. and talk about broken treaties, and, and then they got took Alcatraz there a couple of years later. Well, that was a, yeah, that happened after I left, and I didn't right. go because we were engaged in other issues here. Uh -huh. And then AIM popped up, the American Indian right. Movement, right. and friends with the leaders, and I supported their causes. I was only in a couple of their actions. I, I wasn't at Wounded Knee or anything. I was here drunk. <laughs> when Wounded Knee happened. Uh, and we had a tragedy here. We had a shooting at one of these parties. We were all drinking and everybody ended up in jail and I got released because I found out who the shooter was. I was passed out. I didn't know him. Right out in the front yard, this guy shot him in the head. Wow. And uh, 
But that, that journey uh, uh, creating these elongated figures, I mean, and painting, uh, can, were also part of my recovery besides the program uh, because it offered me that, uh, it gave me something to do that was creative and right. it uh, sparked that imagination I had about the arts. And, right. Well, obviously you had these images, like you said, the tall Indian figures that you, you had those in you probably, you know, I mean, this, when you sat down and focused on it and started working, I mean, these things just came out of you as, as that's what happens with art, you know, so. Well, I, I think you're right, but I, I think it's also part of the spirituality of recovery. I'm, I'm a very spiritual person today. Uh -huh. I'm not a religious person. I'm a spiritual. I believe, I, I believe in something. I have no idea, but I believe in something and, uh, uh, that's the, that's the message I take, you know. Honor your belief, whether it is religious or spirituality. Uh, when you get sober, because you need to have that connection. I think that anybody who gets sober or drug free had a spiritual experience in their life to have right. that happen. But right. I think if you want to have a healthy recovery life, that you practice recovery and give back to that community for the rest of your life, one day at a time. Right. I know a lot of Indians I helped and were with me we saw that don't even do that. You know, I, get, I don't know what the deal is, but I don't pay much attention to that because yeah, right. there, there are a bunch of Indians who, in this country who are sober and actually practicing that in urban areas and on reservations, and I, I, get, to, uh, uh, I get to meet them, mm -hmm. you know, and share that recovery. And, so that, along with the, the gift of, you, uh, of being an artist, uh, as part of my journey, uh, we, we reflect that in terms of healing. Pride, you know, I, I don't really paint old traditional Indians. Uh -huh. I paint contemporary Indians, you know, uh -huh. uh, because uh, this is who we are. That's We're not, we don't live in the past, right. you know. And, and, so the one benefit I had is I had a gallery for 14 years in Old Town, so if I drew a line and signed it, I could very much put it on the wall. If somebody liked it, they bought it. <laughs> I didn't have to cater to a gallery, you know, and do the repetition of yeah, right. this is what sells, you know. And huh. So I lucked out in lots of ways, you know. And there, well, there were lots of people that helped me. I mean, uh, white people, black people, Chicanos, and other Indians, you know, people from other nationalities were, and I helped them, and we helped each other, and we still are, are the best of friends. I mean, whenever we run into each other, we're all looking at, oh, geez, are you still alive? And, <laughs> yeah. You know, that kind of stuff, yeah. and it, it's been a wonderful journey. Uh, how about uh, influences of, art, artistic influences? I mean, do you, did you, uh, did you have any, uh, you know, uh, heroes in terms of art or? Well, you... yeah, I, I, I love Van Gogh. Okay. I love Picasso. Uh, right. uh, Oscar Howe was one of my, I loved his art and I got this Lifetime Achievement Award with him. He's passed on, but right. when they called me up and announced it and they said, you and Oscar and this lady from Zia got it, I couldn't believe it. Oscar Howe, he was one of my my mentors, uh, uh, there was another guy from Oklahoma by the name of Black Bear Boson. Uh -huh. he, he passed on. Uh, the really weird thing is I met both of their wives at art shows. Uh -huh. And, and uh, they, they told me who they were, you know. My uh -huh. name is, uh, my husband was Black Bear Boson or Oscar Hound. I really love your art, you know, and that inspired uh -huh. me too. Yeah, right. So we, we always uh, were inspired by the action of people that looked at our art. There were people that said, I wouldn't buy that for anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, but you have to get used to rejection. As an artist, right. Yeah. People don't like rejection. No, you that's know? right. And, yeah, and absolutely. I, I had to, uh, but I considered rejection a, 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 a positive criticism of what I was doing. Because uh, if if they had sat there and analyzed it enough to not like it, then I knew that they were thinking about my what the creativity of the art. And right. I've had people come and say, "I'd love to buy that, but I can't afford it, Sam." You know, and 
they, they could have been a doctor or an engineer or some guy work selling news. I don't, but that inspired me too because they were interested, you know, and so I guess I yeah, was, absolutely. I always figured, well, you got something, Sam, you got to explore it. Right. Well, when you put yourself out there, you know, when you're willing to show your work and put yourself out there, you have to be ready for all that, you know. I mean, you get all kinds of responses from art, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I see you're a real colorist here, you know, you love these, the, uh, just for the few things I've looked at in there. Yeah, I love color. Yeah, you have a I real love sense color. Of... One thing about gouache paint, it's a real intense painting. Mm -hmm. Paint. It, uh, as opposed to watercolor, you know, right. watercolors you can almost see through. Right, exactly. Uh, so we uh, we just developed a style with it. Uh, today we're working more with uh, oils on canvas. Uh -huh. I mean, because I'm older, I'm a diabetic. And uh, I have a little twitch, you know, and sometimes I gotta hold my hand. I don't mention that too much, but, uh, so, but with the oils you can, and if you mess up, man, you clean yeah, you it up. Yeah, you redo it, right. Yeah, right. So, that's the good part about oils, right? Yeah, and I like the bigger, the, the bigger palette that you, I mean, uh, you know, canvas that you're using, and, uh, uh, you, you, but you gotta grow from painting on paper like this, and images like this, or like this, the huge images, so you gotta, you gotta think big, right. you know, and how that work is gonna represent you as an artist so that's kind of what we're doing right now uh, I'm having fun with it you know yeah, that's uh, good. but this the traveling we do is like primarily for workshops for Indian youth uh -huh. uh, to inspire because I'm hoping what happens is that by making a, a piece of art uh, that they might be inspired uh, to think well somebody like this you know Sam likes this so. Maybe yeah, right. Maybe I'll start reading about art, right? You know, or maybe I'll start exploring. Or I wrote this about my art, and Sam liked it. Maybe I'll explore writing, and maybe you can inspire them to go beyond those limitations of urban Indian poverty or reservation poverty. Right. You know, and most of our reservations are poverty stricken. We don't right. all have successful I understand. casinos. Right. You know? I understand. So, but it, it's a beautiful journey up to now, and I don't know where it's going to go. We're going to paint. We'll go to Santa Fe. Uh, we're entering a new phase, I think. You know, uh, I'm 67 years old now. Uh, I want to paint till it's over. I want to stay sober. I want to help Indian country. Uh, do the best I can. And, and the book is unbelievable. I mean, who the hell would ever thought an old drunk could have a book? You know, uh, that Lifetime Achievement That's Award. Beautiful. From Swaya? Right. I mean, these are right. my mentors who are artists themselves who honor me with this gift. And, and I'm thinking, uh, uh, man, I can't believe this. I mean, I'm not in it, you know, uh, for any of this stuff. I'm in it to, to have peace in my life, to be creative, make art, uh, help people. That's all I care about. I mean, really. Uh, but to have these are gifts for me. That's I mean, great. To you know, and the people I've met, I. It's wonderful. Okay.